Now let's talk about notes about stoichiometry problems for uh, AP Chemistry. So this is really quick and simple because this is something we've kind of sort of gone over in class. Um, I want you to know something really important about stoichiometry problems, all right? Anytime you see the words produce or react, realize that you need to write a chemical equation since a chemical re reaction is actually happening. Okay, so if you see something being produced or reacting, you should assume that you have to write a chemical equation. And these are four of the things I want you to understand, all right? Remember, the diatonic molecules are written as follows. Br2 is always a liquid, I2 is always a solid, and the rest of the diatonic molecules are always gases, and they're written as blank 2. Like N2Cl2, H2O2, F2, and all um, five of these are gases, whereas I2 is a solid and Br2 is a liquid, all right? Remember, the phase of metals are always solids except for HGL. And let's remember, um, <clears throat> other substances and solutions usually will be given with their chemical names, so just write their formulas and, you know, make sure you write the proper phase. Like, if it's solution, it's AQ, and they'll tell you the phase. And for balance, after writing the chemical equation with the appropriate species, please balance, 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 balance. If you don't balance, you cannot get the correct stoichiometric ratios. All right, so let's try an example of how we do this. Um, it says, what number of moles of O2 is needed to produce 15.8? 15.3 grams of N2 from N2, which is the molecular, which has a molecular weight of um, 108.02, right? So what we first have to do is we have to realize that um, O2 is needed to produce this one from N2. So the whole idea here is that obviously N2 and O2 somehow have to combine in a chemical reaction to produce O2, uh, N2O5. So what you have to do is you have to write chemical reaction writing involving N2 gas and O2 gas since, you know, they're diatomic and, you know, we, we know they're both gases, right? Only Br2 and I2 are not gases. But we know these two are gases, so we write like that. Uh, N2O5, we don't know the phase since it's not given in the question, so we just write as N2O5, right? Once we do that, we have to balance out the reaction. We know there are two N's on both sides, so the N's good. But the O is not good because we have two on this side but five on this side. How we balance that is we just multiply this by 2.5 to get 5 O's on both sides. If we do that, we get N2 gas plus 5 halves O2 gas gives you N2O5, right? You have to balance the O's, obviously, th since there are 2 on the left and 5 on the right. What you do now is you have to multiply everything by 2 to get whole number coefficients, just so it makes it easier to compare everything. So what you do is you multiply 1 by 2, 5 halves by 2, and 1 by 2. If you do that, you get 2 on 2 plus 5 O2 gives you 2 on 2 5 Right, so once you do that, you got everything. So now you can use the stoichiometric ratio later. But what we have to do here is not only do we have to use this chemical equation, but we have to be very specific. We start with um, a massive N2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide. And what we have to do, obviously, to make any comparison between uh, O2 and N2O5 is we got to convert the N2O5 to moles. So we had to convert N2O5 to moles because you cannot use gram ratios. They don't exist. There are only molar ratios from the coefficients in chemical reactions. So we got to convert the mass of dinitrogen pentoxide to moles. So what we do is we know that um, for dinitrogen pentoxide, if you, can, if you calculate using your periodic table, you know that approximately 108 grams of N2O5 is equal to one mole, right? Since we're starting with grams, that's our undesirable unit. We have to convert from grams to moles, and the way we do that is this conversion factor. Grams is our, what we start with, and we obviously want to get to moles to, get, to use a stoichiometric ratio. Since grams is what we want to convert from, that's our undesirable unit. And the conversion factor involving 108 grams and moles, we've got to put 108 grams in the denominator to get rid of this grams in the numerator, right? And this moles obviously has to go and is desirable, so it goes in the numerator. So what we do is we just put, you know, grams down here to cancel out the grams in the numerator here. Since if you have grams in the numerator, you have to put grams in the denominator, the conversion factor to cancel it. Then you have moles. If you want to get from moles to something else, we got to now think carefully. Now that we have the moles of N2O5, we have to be able to convert to the moles of O2. The reason why is because if we want the grams of, uh, sorry, if we want the moles of O2, um, we have to be able to convert um, from O2, sorry, we have to be able to convert from N2 to O5, O2, sorry, N2O5 to O2. How we do that is we use the coefficients. And the coefficients that we're given are um, as follows. We have two N2O5s, or two moles of N2O5, 
right, for every 5 moles of O2, correct? So there we go. We know that we have 2 n 2 5s for every 5 moles of O2. Since we know the stoichiometric ratio, what we have to do now is we have to make sure that um, we plug this consideration in. Since we have moles of N2O5 and we want to convert to moles of O2, this is our undesirable because we have moles of N2O5 already, but what we really want is the O2. So I'm labeling these desirable and undesirable. This is undesirable because this is what we have. This is desirable because this is what we want. So what we do is we get rid of... Um, we get rid of this N2O5 by putting this part of the conversion factor in the denominator, 2 moles of N2O5. This is what we want, so we, since it's desirable, so we put in the numerator. Once we do that, we cancel out the number of moles of N2O5, and we get the moles of O2. Sorry, this problem, you can correct these on these slides on your own. You, it should say what mass of O2 is needed. This problem actually will solve for mass, not moles. All right, so now that you have the moles of O2, uh, you got to convert to the mass of O2. Now, there is a relationship to get from mass to moles. We know it's molar mass. If we calculate the uh, gram formula mass of O2, we know that it, or the molar mass of O2, we know that there's 32 grams of O2 per one mole of O2. So 32 grams equals one mole, right? Since we've already got moles of O2, five moles of O2, this obviously, this mole part here is undesirable, so we label it U. That obviously means it goes in the numerator because that's what we want to convert from. This is what we want to convert to, which is the mass of O2, so that's desired and we put in the, uh, sorry, we put in the numerator. We put this on the top since it's desired, but that's what we want at the end. This is undesirable, so we put it at the bottom. Once we do that, we cancel out the moles. Since moles is on the numerator here, we put in the denominator here to cancel it out, and we're only left with grams of O2. Now we just multiply the numbers in the top, divide by numbers in the bottom, and we get 11.3 grams of O2. That's our answer. All right, complex weight problem. This is a little tricky, so let's see how we go through this. All right, what we have to do here is we have to take into consideration the fact that we have NH2SO4 and M and Na2SO4-10H2O. We see that this whole thing has a mass of 2.472, but after you heat it to drive off all the water, the mass is 1.098. And we have to find the weight percent of Na2SO4-10H2O in the mixture, okay? <clears throat> so what you have to do here is first you have to find the molar masses of water and the ionic solid included in the hydrate. How you do that is obviously you calculate molar mass just like you calculate gram formula mass in Gen Chem last year. All right, so you got to calculate the molar mass of water and the ionic solid here. The water here, obviously, is uh, H2O. Duh. The ionic solid here is NH2SO4, so we got to calculate their molar masses. All right, so what you have to do there afterwards is, um, let's see, you got to calculate from there the uh, mass of water first because you have the mass of the complex and when you ca and you drive off all the water you're left with this so since this is dehydrated and since this is hydrated the difference between hydrate and dehydrated forms is water how you do that obviously is since water is driven off Driv since water is driven off you subtract this mass of the dehydrated form from the hydrated form to get the mass of water once you get the mass of the water you have to convert it into moles of water using water's molar mass the reason why is because you got to use this formula later. You'll see in a minute. But find the mass of water, then convert into moles using water's molar mass. Next, what you have to do is you have to use the formula for the hydrate, uh, this one, to find the moles of ionic solid inside the hydrate. All right. Um, since it gives the ratio of water to one mole of the ionic solid. All right, so like, uh, you know, you remember that this coefficient shows you the moles of H2O, and the coefficient in front of here would show you the moles of the ionic solid. So like, for example, here, we see that there's a 10 coefficient here and a 1 coefficient here, since there's no coefficient. Therefore, that would mean that one mole of the ionic solid in the hydrate is present in this hydrate per every 10 moles of H2O, because you have a 1 coefficient here and a 10 coefficient here. So one, one mole of this is present for every 10 moles of water, right? That would be an example of what you do. Then what you do is based on that molar uh, ratio between this and this, you can um, use that convoluted molar ratio to find the moles of this. Like if you had 20 moles of H2O, you would obviously have two moles of this because the ratio of this H2O to this NH2SO4 is 10 to 1. So if you had 20 moles of this, you would have one mole, uh, two moles of this, since 20 divided by 10 is 2. It's a 10 to 1 ratio, so if you had 20 moles of this, you would get two moles of this. That's the idea there. Then you've got to convert the moles of the ionic solid to mass. Once you do that, you got the mass of the ionic solid and the water 
in this hydrate, just because you use stoichiometry here. Once you find the mass of the ionic solid in the water, add them up and divide it by the mass of the mixture, multiply it by 100 to find the weight percent. I told you this is a really complex weight problem. So let's do this one by one. Step one, find the molar mass of water in the ionic solid. Do this on your own. I'm not going to do this in detail. You'll see that the molar mass of water is 18.016 grams per mole, right? The mass of uh, NH2SO4, you can do this on your own, is 142.04 grams per mole, right? Um, the mass of water obviously is equal to the mass of the mixture, which is hydrated mass minus the mass of the dehydrated mixture. The mass of the hydrated mixture is 2.472. You subtract the mass of the dehydrated mixture, which is 1.098, and you get the mass of water, 1.374 grams, right? You find the moles of water by plugging into number of moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. The mass is 1.374. The molar mass of water is 18.016 grams per mole, which you found here. If you do that, you get 0 0.07627 moles, right? Now, you got to use stoichiometry. You know that you have 0 0.07627 seven six two seven moles in general in any part of this mixture because that's what's driven off you dro drove off all the water right since you found the mass of water and the moles of water you can assume that you have point zero seven six two seven moles of this right and obviously you can find the moles of na2so4 as follows since you have moles here uh, of h2o and you want to get the moles of na2so4 we know that the relationship between these two is one mole of this for every 10 moles of this since we have moles of water, we got to put the 10 moles ratio, 10 moles of water ratio part on the bottom because that's an undesirable unit. 10 moles of H2O goes on the bottom and you cancel these units out. And you know that there's obviously one mole of this because of the coefficients. There's 10 moles of H2O based on the coefficient, there's one mole of this based on the coefficient. So we put the one mole of NH2SO4 part on the top. One mole of NH2SO4 part goes on the top because that's the moles you want. You want the moles of NH2SO4, so you put it on the top. You put the moles of H2O on the bottom because that's what you already have and you want to convert from there, so you put it on the bottom, you cancel it out. Once you do that, you solve for the moles of NH2SO4 just based on this molar ratio of one, one of these to 10 of these, and you get that since there's 0 0.07627 moles of H2O, there's one tenth of the moles of that for NH2SO4. In other words, 0 0.0076 moles of NH2SO4. All right, then you gotta find the mass of NH2SO4. How you do that is you take this mass of NH2SO4 in the hydrate and you plug it into number of moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. How you solve for um, mass is you just cross multiply number of moles times molar mass and you get that you have the mass of NH2SO4 is equal to 0 0.0076 moles times 142.04 grams per mole, which you found in the first step, and you get 1.803 grams of NH2SO4, right? So then what you got to do is now that you have the mass of NH2SO4 in the hydrate and the mass of water in the hydrate, you add them up and you get 2.457 grams. Then you divide it by the whole mixture mass to find the uh, complex, sorry, to find the weight percent in the mixture. So you get 2.475 grams for the mass of the hydrate here, divided by the mass of the whole mixture, 2.472, and you multiply by 100, and you get 99.4%. That's all you do. So basically what you do is you find the molar masses, then you find the mass of the water, then find the moles. Once you find the moles of the water, use a stoichiometric ratio based on the coefficients here to find the moles of NH2SO4. The ratio is 10 to 1 because the, ratio, the coefficient here is 10, the coefficient here is 1. So therefore, if you have 10 moles of H2O, you have one, one mole of NH2SO4. Therefore, since we have 0 0.076 moles of H2O, we would have one-tenth of that, or 0 0.00762 uh, moles of um, NH2SO4. Then we plug that into the um, formula for moles, and we find the mass of NH2SO4. Then we add up the mass of NH2SO4 and the mass of H2O to find the moles, sorry, to find the mass of the hydrate divided by the mass of the whole complex mixture thing and multiply by 100 and you get your weight percent. All right, for uh, determination of empirical formulas, just do this on your own. Just know that um, there is a ratio between CO2 and H2O, okay?